Are you a subject matter expert who struggles to speak with confidence? Are you losing career opportunities and feeling stuck because of your stage fear and nervousness during presentations? Isn't that affecting your happiness and your family's future? Welcome to The Confident Man Show with Mr. Bashal Sarkar, India's celebrity expert in practical public speaking, where he shows you how to speak with confidence, deliver rock-solid confident presentations in front of decision makers without any stage fear. Would you like to become the confident man, gain more respect, and enjoy a happy life? Then listen carefully because this is showtime. For knowing more about the upcoming practical public speaking courses and opportunities to get mentored by Mr. Bishal himself, go to bishalsarkar.com. Again, you can go to bishalsarkar.com for more information about having a conversation with our team members about your situation. Show starts now. Three, two, one, let's go. Welcome to the Confident Man Show and I am Anupama Chatterjee. Today we are speaking with celebrity expert in public speaking, Mr. Bashal Sarkar on how to engage with your audience. Is your engagement with your audience average? Do you know how to handle it like a pro? We will have Bashal to talk about it and understand how to make that engagement. That's right. So Bashal, what do you think is the most common mistake that people make when they're engaging with their audience? Yeah, that's a good question, Anupama, because uh, when I work with a lot of subject matter experts, uh, majorly men who have a lot of experience in their field, but uh, they're having a lot of challenges Mm -hmm. in in connection with the audience, especially uh, they don't know how to connect, uh, especially to senior managers. I mean, the folks that I mentor generally, Anupama, as you know, we, we, we don't um work with beginners you know we work yes. with people who are already experts in their field who have the knowledge the experience and the maturity in themselves True. to really become the confident speaker because it's not for everybody what i don't work with everybody yes. one of the challenges i see is they don't understand that um you know when when somebody is listening to you um yes. as an audience whether they are senior manager or a coordinate or a client there are few parts of their listening that happen so let me explain quickly what i mean by that uh, there is a left brain and the left brain people always look for numbers numbers statistics logic the right brain side of uh, us uh, look for more of colors and emotions and you know uh, things that really so connect like creative. with us. creative the emotional side versus the logical side so you will see that some people are very emotional i mean look at you <laughs> <laughs> Totally. There are some people who are emotional and look at me too. I'm, I'm a very emotional person. I'm, that means that our right brain is more activated than the left brain. So, and it's it's right. Sometimes the left brain is more activated. Those are all logical people. You know, you tell them anything, doesn't matter. They want more numbers and, you know, how many, how many children can I create? I, <laughs> all the scientists in the world have the left brain activated uh no but they don't doesn't i mean it doesn't guarantee that but what it does guarantee is they have trained their left brain to work during their work time more than ever before so if you go to a painter the painter works more in the quality of the painting versus thinking i have to make 41 paintings today you see that's (laughs) the right brain which is makes more in the quality and the emotional side so the number one i think mistake many people make is they make their presentation too logical Okay, so they just talk about numbers and this and that, and they really don't understand how to connect. So I think the tip that I can give people is, and this is a tip, by the way, Anupama, before I give it, this is used by Narendra Modi. This is used by other popular politicians, Donald Trump, Obama, everybody used this technique. Steve Jobs used it like like a champ that he was, and he is. And when you use this technique, it's very simple, but when you use it, you can speak better, connect faster, and yes, make more impact. And that tip is... Use personal stories. Use personal stories. Use personal stories. We know the personal story of Narendra Modi, where he came from, so we connect with him. You may like him, you may not like him. Doesn't matter, you know him is what matters, right? So that's one. You know, you always want to have a personal story in order to connect with people. For example, when people come to know my story, that I did not come from a great background. I was born and brought up in a small town called Shiliguri. Growing up, I did not um, uh, have a great background. I studied in a Bengali medium government school. My parents paid 280 rupees per year for my schooling. And uh, I came from an average, you know, family. So b- b- nobody told me one day you can be a successful businessman. Nobody told me one day you can be a confident speaker. So when people connect with me and hear that story and they come to know that I'm actually an introverted person, 
They're like, wow, I want to learn from you because they make that connection. So personal exactly, story is that's very what important. Happens because I speak to people on a regular basis because people come directly to me to talk to me. So what happens is they tell me that, you know, what I know Bishal's story, I know yeah. that he comes from an average background. He comes from a middle class background. You know what? I have a middle class background. I know Bishal's story. Right. And I feel like, you know, I am in Bishal's shoes. Exactly. Well, they're in their shoes. <laughs> but they feel that they're in Bishal's shoes. So they tell me that, you know, I'm an introvert, introverted person, but I see Bishal, he's an introverted person, but he connects with it's people so much. Absolutely. And they're like engaged already, even before we start working with them. Absolutely. And they get inspired by that, right? And in fact, I remember, <laughs> I remember, uh, bless you, because I know you have cold and you're still recording this. I really appreciate that, Anupama. So in fact, you know, when I inspire people, it's very nice for me because I got inspired by a lot of people. Now, if you know the thing, um, you know, see, there are a lot of speakers out there who just watch, keep watching YouTube videos all day long to train their clients because it's kind of like, it's kind of like not knowing how to really help anybody lose the weight. So they go on YouTube, <laughs> get some tips and teach other people because they don't know what to do themselves. Yes. Um, I don't watch other speakers much. Some, some people, yes, but not for their speaking but more for what they are teaching that's the reason I don't watch uh, a lot of YouTube videos anymore uh, it doesn't really? make sense to me because uh, most of them most of the people that we have out there are not originals anymore uh, they are just they are like echo not the voice and how do you figure out that uh, well you listen to them and everybody's saying the same thing you know you figure out everybody's saying that you have to believe in yourself everybody's saying that you have to um, uh, you know just just believe and, and, and just keep going never give up never give up you have to be hungry I am hungry man I'm hungry. I want to eat something. <laughs> That's my new message. Eat something. So, so when I, I listen to some people, I, I, I study a lot of magicians. Yes. Okay. I study a lot of the politicians, like what they are doing in their speakings and how I can implement that in my, my speaking style and how I can teach my clients, the subject matter experts, the IT professionals when they come. So they don't have just experience of mine. They have the experience of all the people that I learned from. And one of them is Chris Angel. Have you heard of the name Chris Angel? Anupama? Yes. And I have uh, seen totally his Yeah, face. He's great. Like he knows charisma like like amazing he has a great physique great connection and he knows it and one of the things i learned from him uh by watching him he he does like uh, 300 shows every year okay people every single day almost like that's like six days a week every single day people come to his shows hundreds and thousands of people to watch his shows and one of the things that he does in his presentations like okay. he does it for two to three hours to make sure that everybody's engaged is he does something very exceptional and you can do this dear listener in your presentation and that is bring audience members to the stage Okay, so anytime yes. he sees that people are not engaging with him and, you know, the energy goes down sometimes in shows, instead of just saying, I'm doing magic, I'm doing, he says, hey, hey, you, hey, girl, yeah, come to the stage. Hey, man, hey, man, yeah, you, not the white one, the black one, come on, come to the stage. And he calls people on the stage. Why? Because now everybody's like, oh, what's happening? Now, think about it, dear listener, if you are giving the presentation and if people are not listening to you, you can do that. You can say, hey, um. You can ask some question to somebody. You can bring some, uh, ask about their opinion. And when like Satish from the audience starts answering, answering the people beside Satish think, oh, may maybe I'm next. I got to pay attention right now. So that's very, very important for people to understand. Yes, totally. Because when you're speaking, if somebody else come to the stage, the audience attention immediately gets connected. Absolutely. They're like hooked to you. They're hooked to you. And let me tell you, if, if you are losing the attention of the audience, there is a specific six word sentence you can use, like one line, Anupama. Do I want to know. Yeah. Do you think it's going to add value to the listeners? Yes. If you say these six words, okay, people will instantly listen to you more. And it applies not just in presentation. You can do this everywhere on presentations on phone call conversations email social media if people are not engaging boom and you know that it happens all the time right i yes. somebody's not engaging and i just did a, do a quick email and they're like sending a long email like oh my god thank you so much for emailing and i do this thing that the, the six words are this let me ask you a question that's it let me ask you a question so let's say you're talking 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 and people are not engaging much you say all right let me ask you a question how many of you here would like to learn more about the SAP project? Boom. Now here's why. Instead. So instead of having a one-way conversation, you're creating a two-way communication because um, the confident man guideline number two is don't get ready, stay ready. So when you stay ready and ask this simple little question, let me ask you a question, everything transforms for you. Let me ask you a question then. So what do you think? 
when you say stay ready mm-hmm. do you think people should stay ready even in impromptu situations absolutely how can they stay ready in impromptu situations because you have to understand life is not scripted it's not a movie you know it, it doesn't have a script anything can happen any time you stay ready when you're driving heck yeah otherwise uh, well, <laughs> bad thing is going to happen you have to stay ready you have, you have to know that anything can happen any time right? right so you like i was having a coaching call one day one afternoon when an earthquake happened talk about staying ready i was not ready for that oh so you can think it was i think 2014 or 15 when when it happened in west bengal i was in my hometown having a coaching call with one of my co- one on one coaching client that that really wants wanted to transform his speaking and it really improved and and this is exactly what happened so you have to stay ready in all situations knowing that you have to show up like a champ not a chump Champ means loser, champs mean winner. So you want to show up like a champ. Totally. Fact, let me tell you this, okay? I see this thing. This this bugs me out a lot sometimes. You know, Nupama, a lot of people sometimes who wake up early, uh, you know, yes. he always shame us. Like, you you guys should wake yeah, up early. This They generation, always, you generation, know, like totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wake yeah. up at I, 11 and you don't even see the sunrise. What am I going to do with be, the sunrise every day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I get bored seeing the sun. Like, hey, man, it's bad for my like eyes. Like, every day? Here's the thing I say to people, okay? I don't wake up early, very proudly, and I'll tell you why. Because I honor myself, I honor my routine, and I honor my brain. I know when I'm most creative, and that's in the night time after 11. So I work in that time to honor myself and my brain because I believe in flow versus force. I honor myself. So there are a lot of rules you know a lot of motivational speakers out there this, you know say you have to comb your hair in certain way you have to wear a white shirt in presentation you have to wake up early but these are rules uh, to be broken you know you have to, you, you have your own life you have to decide for yourself And what's important dis- to you you know we are not demoting pe- demotivating people with like waking mm-hmm. up early there's there's nothing wrong with waking up early and yeah. if you're waking up early that's great that's great but there are some people who are trying to put themselves inside the container of waking up early yeah. when they are destined to be creative at some other time Absolutely. maybe at night maybe evening yeah yeah like for example i always give this example you know a lot of meditators say that don't be attached to things right yes. don't, don't don't have attachment yeah. those meditators get attached to meditation <laughs> yeah yeah because they think oh i'm supposed to do that so they don't judge their flow like on some days if i don't like meditation i won't do it why would i force myself you can't force yourself to freedom you can't suffer your way to success you can't pain your way to prosperity okay the only way is happiness you whatever makes you happy all right let's quickly talk about before we end the show let's talk about what i learned from bhagavad gita about how to gain respect from your senior managers colleagues family members clients and customers in fact this advice has worked for thousands of years and it works even better today okay would you like to know about it anupama totally i'm totally interested this comes from chapter 2 verse 47 which says if you if you translate it to english it says you have the right to perform your prescribed duties but you are not entitled to the fruits of your actions never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of your activities nor be attached to inaction what it means is basically instead of thinking uh, how do i convince people right a lot of, we hear a lot of that how do i convince my senior managers to give me that thing how how do i convince my wife to give me more love yes. how do i con- you don't want to convince you want to convert and how do you do that you focus on input versus outcome i want to lose 5 kilo weight but nobody sets the goal to show up and walk for 45 minutes every single day i want more clients in my business but nobody sets a goal to what to do in order to achieve that and that is the mistake so if you focus more on your activity the daily activity so for example one thing i do is every single day i send an email in the morning the confident expert daily mentoring you know there is a reason why i have like probably 5 to 10 times more inquiries than i can handle right now right yes. i i can't work with everybody there is a big chunk of hundreds of people in waiting list i don't say it with arrogance this is the truth because i don't i can't work with everybody why because i focus on my input versus looking for the outcome uh, okay. all the time and the final thing i want to talk about today is this is a common mistake that most corporate professionals make uh, especially that and it it happens generally after the age of 30 i'll tell you this okay. but it's something that was installed in you even beforehand and that is neediness 
You respect me. Please respect me. Please love me. And I can a lot say, of people have this. A lot of people have that. And, and you know what? I've been doing it for so long. It's almost like second nature to me many times because I've I've been growing up with that. So the 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 what I tell them always is, you know, it, it comes from the confident man guideline number 10, which is stop seeking outside approval to be yourself. You don't have stop. to you don't have to impress your senior managers. You have to impress yourself by being the most fucking generous and authentic version of yourself that shows up in the world and says, hey, darkness, here I am. I'm the light. That is exactly how you connect with an audience and handle like a pro. That's how you become a confident speaker. If you want to know more about it, and if you want to explore more opportunities, make sure you reach out to me for a discussion. You can reach out to me on 888-361-526. That's 888-361-526. Make sure when you call me, and if I'm not available for some reason because I'm a human being, make sure you call me at a proper time. If I don't pick up, I'm going to call she you. She will pick up. And the last words for the day is public speaking is not about perfection. It's all about connection. Congratulations for listening to today's show. If you're ready to become the confident man in your own life, go to bishalsarkar.com and apply for a conversation today. For that, go to bishalsarkar.com. All right, time for me to go. Have a confident day.